In September 2006, in the small village of Kotri bordering the Sambar Salt Lake in Rajasthan, the first ever reverse osmosis plant was started off solar power. The plant is producing 600 litres of portable water, 450 parts per million that's ppm, from brackish saline water measuring 4000 ppm. It is the first village-based plant of its kind in the country. Sambar Lake is the largest Indian salt lake in Rajasthan. There are nearly 100 villages around this lake with a population of over 250,000 people earning their livelihoods manufacturing and marketing salt. Water with the TDS, that's total dissolved solids, as high as 18,000 is pumped out of open wells into large pans where the sun evaporates the water to produce salt. It is an amazing sight to see attracting many unexpected visitors from all over the world. There are nearly 150 open wells in this vast area of 1800 square kilometers, but the water is not fit to drink. It's highly brackish with the TDS ranging from 3000 to 4000 ppm. Sweet water is piped into these villages from vast distances. The portable sources have also dried up and now even through the pipelines, the water being pumped from open wells and supplied is brackish. It has been tested to be as high as 4000 TDS. This poor quality of water has led to stunted growth of children, various skin ailments, physiological problems and no agriculture produce since the salinity is not conducive to taking even a rain fed crop. Most of the 100 villages around the Sambar Lake have between 50 to 300 houses each. They are away from the conventional grid some 15 kilometers away and even though there is evidence of poles, there has hardly been any electricity supplied through these power lines for years. On paper, however, the villages have been declared to be electrified. There is enough sun for over 300 days in a year to dry the water to produce salt. There is enough brackish water to make into portable water with the technology available. And this is an area facing an acute shortage of portable drinking water. What is a mystery is, with all the technology and resources available, why has it taken such a long time, 60 years, to introduce a solar power desalination plant in remote brackish water villages where there is no other alternative. The Barefoot College along with scientists from the Central Salt and Marine Chemical Research Institute CSMCRI in Bhavnagar, Gujarat designed a tailor-made relatively small desalination plant in six months that could be managed, repaired and operated by the community themselves. The Barefoot College provided the 2.5 to 3 kilowatt solar power plant from the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy Funds. Rupees 6 lakhs was provided to the CSMCRI to fabricate the reverse osmosis plant in Bhavnagar. It took six months to complete this work and the plant was operational on the 3rd of September 2006. The village selected to install the first ever solar power desalination plant was Kotri. It's 60 miles from the district headquarters Ajmer. It is 10 miles from the Sambar Lake. There is a small voluntary organization called Manthan working there, collecting rainwater from the roofs of rural schools into underground waterproof tanks, running schools at night for dropout children, and implementing a preventive health program for the last eight years. The Aro plant, since September 2006, is producing portable water 600 litres per hour. The brackish water is coming to the village through the government pipelines. This is being pumped through the Aro plant and stored in a 5,000 litre tank. The Aro plant components are simple and easily available. A sand filter can be designed in the village itself. A booster pump is required that costs rupees 4000. A cartridge and a carbon filter that serves to prevent waste and levels of impurities in the water to be desalinated can be purchased from the market. The membrane, which is the crucial for the last stage where water is desalinated, is produced solely by the CSMCRI. Can it be fabricated without the technical assistance of CSMCRI? Yes, it is technically possible. The motors, the pumps, the sand filters, the pressure gauges, fittings and valves can be purchased locally where the desalination plant is being installed. Only the spiral module 
has to be purchased from the CSMCRI and depending on the salinity it may need to be changed after 3 years India me ye aro plan lagane ka anubhav hai 32 saal se ye kaam kar raha hu solar power operator hai bharat me humne ye pehla plant idhar lagaya hai two barefoot water engineers Pema Ram studied up to class 5 when Hanuman who studied up to class 6 were present while the aro plant was being installed one previously carried out water quality tests and the other worked as a barefoot solar engineer. Since September 2006, they have kept the RO plant running. Members of the village came and saw the plant at work and tested the water. A meeting was held with the elders to decide how much they were prepared to pay for the portable water. Villages have agreed to pay rupees 10 per month for the water produced by the Aro plant. It costs rupees 20 lakhs to install the Aro plant, specially designed for operating at the village level. Rupees 12 lakhs for the 3 kilowatt solar power plant. Rupees 6 lakhs for transportation, fabrication and installation of the Aro plant and rupees 2 lakhs for community training, water testing for quality control, spares and replacement of the membranes. The process from the beginning to the end will take 6 months to commission a new RO plant in a new village. At the end of the day, this RO plant has the capacity to convert salt water into sweet at 1000 litres per hour and is suitable for a village of 100 houses and serves a population of some 3000. Is it cost effective? Analyzing the present strategy of the government to provide drinking water to 100 villages through laying of pipelines, it will cost over 100 crores. Consider the costs of extending conventional grid electricity to 100 non-electrified villages at the rate of rupees 20 lakhs per kilometer, including poles, transmission lines, transformers, and the running costs of government engineers. And yet, there is no certainty electricity and power will ever reach these villages another expense running into several hundred crores. This solar power plant provides six hours of power to produce 5,000 liters per day. When solar is not used by the Aro plant, the power is used for the running the internet facility, an STD PCO booth, two computers running 24 hours of the day, fans and six lights. The power is used for shearing high quality wool serving several hundred sheep farmers and this has proved to be very effective. To produce 5,000 litres of sweet water, 2,500 litres of extremely brackish water measuring 12,000 TDS is wasted. Data is being collected to see if it is possible to do extensive prone cultivation with this water, thus making it also an income generating activity. By showing the vast possibility of a solar operated RO plant providing 5,000 litres for 3,000 people, in a remote non-electrified village as well as providing power for other basic services the idea was to demonstrate the replicability of the approach to cover 100 villages at 20 lakhs per unit reaching over 250,000 people by far the most important lesson learned was that these RO plants could be installed by the people themselves without any technical help or assistance from the government totally self-sufficient self-reliant solar electrified RO plants. It is for the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and the Government of India to decide whether the barefoot approach could be adopted as a policy to install solar-operated RO plants in brackish water areas where the need is the greatest.